Good evening, welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman. This is your host, Adam Graham, uh, bringing you uh, today's episode as we find out what uh, what's happening with Clark Kent's search for Alonzo Craig, and we're going to be getting into that in just a moment. Um, this will, I'm going to go ahead and announce, be the last live edition of the Old Time Radio Superman show. Uh, we will go ahead and just upload these live. We're not getting a whole lot of participation in people who are signing in, but we're getting a, a great deal of downloads, so we're going to continue to do the show. We'll just uh, be recording it off the air. Um, so uh, it won't be live anymore, but we'll still be getting it. So uh, just letting everybody know that so there's no confusions about expectations. But I also want to encourage everybody, though, to please check out Laser and Sword magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. If you love this, if you love serial fiction, you will love Laser and Sword magazine. We have got uh, three great serials running in there. You can get the first issue at no charge. Uh, download it. Uh, and the second issue is available for the reasonable price of $1.25 for downloads. Uh, there are separate prices for printed uh, versions, but we've got fantastic cover art. I just encourage everybody to check it out and recapture the fun of uh, serial magazines. But uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and we will get started with the Alonzo Craig article, part two. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now Superman, champion of the weak and the oppressed, valiant fighter for truth and justice, faster than an airplane, stronger than a locomotive, who came from the planet Krypton to walk the Earth disguised as Miles Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet. Kent had arrived in the Arctic ice field, searching for a special expedition sent out by his newspaper, which was headed by Professor Peters and Ray Martin. Peters and Martin had vanished into the wilds of Ellesmere land in an effort to find what had become of the famous explorer, Captain Alonzo Cragg, missing for over three years, but still believed alive. When we last saw him, Kent had become Superman and had plunged into the sea to rescue the ship from surrounding icebergs. Barely in time, with superhuman strength, he thrust aside the towering tons of ice and forced a path for the ship to the coast of Ellesmere Land. As our story continues today, some time has passed. Kent's expedition has established a base camp, and he and Captain Walters have taken a dog team out into the icy wastes, still heading north in an effort to pick up the trail of Peters and Martin. It is evening. The Arctic night has fallen, and Kent and Walters are discussing whether to remain where they are or strike back toward their base. Walter is gradually giving way to apprehension. Listen. What's the matter? What are we stopping for, Captain? Mr. Kent, I don't know. I can't be sure. But I feel as if something was watching me, following close behind all the time and watching out there in the dark. Don't you feel that? Well, since you mention it, I do. You was asking me if I was afraid. I am afraid, Mr. Kent. I'm afraid of what may happen. <laughs> Listen, that's Chico, the lead dog. And he's afraid, too. Look at him. He's standing right up in his harness. They hear things that we don't hear, Mr. Kent. Who's to say that that they don't see things we don't see? Stop it, Walters. Your nerve's gone. You'll have me seeing things and hearing things next. Now, look here. Back on the boat before we made shore, you started to tell me why you sent that telegraph message to Editor White about having to hurry. What about it? Well, what did you mean? Well, I'd found that ring, hadn't I? The one you said Alonzo Craig's sister gave Martin. Yes, I meant to ask you about that. Where did you get it? An engine brought it down to Port Ormond. But he'd never say where he got it. Do you think he stole it? Maybe so. But how? Martin hid it when he left Port Ormond for Ellesmere Land. I know that. Oh, look, Walter, stop beating around the bush. Tell me what you really do think. Great Scott, man, this isn't time to keep things back. All right, I will tell you. I think Alonzo Craig found out where that Indian treasure was, the luck of the north. And I think that old witch doctor got him. What? The head of the tribe? The one who never dies? That's what they say. Well, all right, what about Peters and Martin? Who got them? I don't know, I don't know. But Peters and Martin, they never should have come up here. 
The tribe hates white men. They've proved that before. I understand they're white themselves. Oh, maybe. Nobody knows for sure. Nobody's ever been up here to see. Chico. What's the matter with him? Walters, look. He seems to see something. Kent, he does see something. Up in the sky. What? Kent, look. Good heavens. Walters, what is it? it? It's a man. The figure of a man up in the clouds. The figure of a man in pale green fire. Kent, Kent, look. It's getting clearer. It's tremendous, Walters. It, it's an Indian. It's the figure of an Indian. He's got his hand raised. It's a warning, Kent. It means to go back. What is it? Look, Walters. You stay right here. Don't move. Kent, Kent, where are you going? Wait. Just stay by the sled. Keep the dogs quiet. It's getting brighter. Kent. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm certainly going to find out. There's something in those clouds, all right. Up we go. Up, up. I can't blame Walters for feeling shaky. I felt the same way myself. Unseen eyes following us, watching us all the time. Now then, into those clouds. Whatever you are, here we come. Oh, it's queer. Not a thing. Not a sign of Indians or fire or anything else. Just clouds and mist. Well, I don't understand it. There isn't anything here. Yet I did see that figure, whatever it was. Walters was right. It was warning us away. Well, no use staying up here. Might as well get back down and see what happens next. Down we go again. Down, down. Walters. I'm right here. Look, where you been? I ran up to that little hummock to see if I could make something out of that thing in the sky. It ain't there no more. Did you see anything? No, not a thing. Well, we see it. You can't get around that. No, I'm not trying to. The question now is, what do we do? I say we go back right now. Oh, it's too dark. We'd miss our own trail. I'd say try it anyway. Do you want to spend the night here? What's the matter? What you looking at now? I'm not sure. Up there ahead through the opening in those cliffs. Can you see anything? Too dark to see much. Looks like a valley opening out beyond the cliffs. Look, Walters. Look through that opening. Don't you see something up there? Don't you? Which way? We... No, I don't see nothing. Look again. Keep looking. Wait a minute. Yes, I do, sir. I do see something, Kent. It's a light. That's it, Walters. There's a flickering light up in that valley. It's almost like a signal light. Come on. Come on. What do you mean? Where are you going? Up there, of course. Man, don't you understand? It may be Peters and Martin. Can't wait. What about that figure? That engine in the sky? Whatever it was, it said, go back. Go back just as plain as day. Never mind. We're going on, Walters. We've got to. Come on, get the dogs going. Hurry up. Kent, I'm telling you, we better not. Walters, if it is Peters and Martin and they're hurt or dying of starvation, would you want to leave them here to die? Would you? No, no, we couldn't do that. Engines are no engines. Frisco! Chico, up! Get up! Come on! Up! up. That's the stuff, Walters. I know you wouldn't quit. We'll head right for that opening in the cliff. Look, the light's still there. Come on, get a move on you. Back to the river! Far away in the darkness of the Arctic night, a faint and flickering signal beckons to Clark Kent and Captain Walters. Under the shadow of the cliffs, on across the crackling ice fields, the panting dog team draws ever closer. And meanwhile, behind them and on every hand, dark forms close in along the trail, slipping silently from rock to rock, hiding behind shadowy blocks of snow and ice. There it is, Walters. We're through the opening of the cliff. And there's the light. Uh, it is a light, sure enough. Say, there's a hut there, too. Eskimo Ice House. I can just make it out. All right. This is close enough. Stop the team. Pull up. Oh, oh there you are. Chico, oh, go down, 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 down. You think this is close enough? I'll have to peg down the dogs. Sure, we'll walk the rest of the way. Well, that light's still there. Make it fast, Walters. All right. I reckon this will hold them. All right, come on. If it's Peters and Martin, they may be in bad shape. Kent. Kent, the light's gone out. Yeah, that's so. It was up there on top of the hut. Must have been some kind of a lamp. Ah, here we are. Did you think to bring a light? Yeah, I got my flashlight. Good. There's the door. All right, I'll go first. You crawl in behind me. Careful now. 
We don't know what's in there. Maybe you better take the light. It's all right. Come on in. Uh, well, say, I don't... Why, it's empty. There ain't nobody here. Martin. Ray Martin. Professor Peters. No use. This is all there is to it. If they was here, you'd see them. But look, there's a whole lot of stuff here. Maybe if we got a look at that, we might be able to tell if it was theirs or not. Listen again. Dogs. What's happening? Something's not after them. Kid, you stay where you are. Don't go outside. Don't you do it. Captain, whatever it is, we've got to save those dogs. Do you want to die right here? Come on, out the way we came in, out through the hole. No, don't you do it. Kid. Kid, look. There was a face. A face there at the door. An engine, Ken, an engine. All right, then we know what we're up against. Come on. No, no, don't you see? They set that light. They just wanted to catch us in the heart. It was a trick, Ken. Come on, Walter. Stay here if you like. I'm going out. Oh, oh. oh. all right. If you want trouble, you can have it. Just wait till I get outside. Oh, I think you'll try knocking my brains out, do you? Well, come closer and try again. Ah, there we are. Out in the clear. Now then. I think I can do better from the air. If it doesn't do anything else, it may start a little bit. Watch out. Here I come. One in each hand. That ought to give them something to think about. There. There. How do you like that? Try to knock strangers on the head, will you? There. Now then, where's Walters? Oh, there he comes. Watch it. Oh, they've hit Walters with a club. But I'll settle that. I've just been playing before. See how you like this. Oh. 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 Now, you're coming around all right, Captain. What? Where am I? Right here, inside the igloo. How do you feel? Ken. Ken, what happened? We were mobbed, Walters. One of your Indian friends hits you over the head with a club before I could stop him. Injuns. But where are they now? They're gone, thank you. I told them to go and they went like that. What? You fought them off, but they'll come back. Oh, no, they won't. Not those Indians. I'll oh, forget it, Walters. I've got something much more interesting. If you're not feeling too low... I'll be all right. I got a good thick head. What's up? Walters, you were right and so was I. What do you mean? It was a trap, all right. Those devils meant to get us in here and probably wipe us out. I'm afraid that's what happened to Peters and Martin, too. Kent, what do you mean? I've been searching around. I found something here in the igloo, something mighty important. Can you sit up, Walters? Here. here. <laughs> All right. Just look here. Look at this. What? What you got there? What is that, Kent? Tell me, what is it? Kent, tell me. What is it? Huddled in the tiny Eskimo ice cabin, Ken and Walter stare unbelievingly at what Kent holds in his hands. The clue that sets them definitely on the trail of Professor Peters and Ray Martin. What is it? And what will happen when they set out tomorrow morning to follow it down? And meanwhile, what of Peters and Martin themselves? Are they still alive? And if they are, can Kent and Walters reach them in time? Tune in next time and follow the story of Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. All right, welcome back. Uh, my wife is beginning to notice uh, some annoying patterns, uh, particularly the last episode. Of course, it ended up in a big, uh, will they get up out of the ice patch? And then we get there and it says, oh yeah, they, Superman got him out of the ice patch, no problem. Um, and then, you know, this big cliffhanger. What's on the piece of paper? <laughs> Uh, part of this uh, is, I think, the constraints of the episode, because they were really trying to make these serials six parts and to get them done uh, within the time allotted. Uh, so they did, so they didn't have time for everything, so they cut some things out, um, like them actually going ahead and you know getting past the iceberg. Um, this, this is not shaping up as one of the better ones right now. We're going to have to see what happens 
but the whole thing with Indians on cliffs, I don't know, it sounds like some weird, yeah, it's just kind of odd, but we'll find out what's behind it uh, in part three, I'm sure. Again, we encourage you to purchase Laser and Sword magazine. Also, go and check out Laser and Sword. Even if you don't want to get the magazine, go to lasersword.adamsweb.us, Superman of the Week. Uh, you are going to really enjoy this episode. It is Speed Demons, uh, and Speed Demons is an episode featuring Superman and the Flash in a one-on-one -on -one road race. It does not get any better than that. Uh, so check that out. Oh, it does include uh, Weather Wizard, so it actually gets a little better than that. So check that out, lasersword.adamsweb.us. Get issue one, issue two, sign up for our newsletter, which will be coming out shortly. I do thank everyone so much for listening. For now, though, this is Adam Graham signing off. <laughs>